Just imagine them on treadmills inside there, just like running. Because I don't know, I don't know how to explain what the hell they're doing inside there. Welcome back, guys. Time for episode five. Now, this video is going to be different from all the other ones I've done before. This one is going to be longer, hopefully. The reason why is because I feel like I'm not covering enough per episode, and I've been reviewing my episodes in review for my own self for a while. Anyways, to make a long story short, this video is going to be longer, and it's going to be to the point. So I'm going to try to cover as much as I can, and this video may last up to about an hour. So, without further ado, let's begin. In the last episode, we shortly covered the city status report. So I'm going to cover this because it's the most important thing you're going to ever view on any of your screens in this game. The city status report shows you where you are, what sector you're in, what galaxy you're in, and gives you coordinates to the whole system. That's all over here. The morale of the town is also displayed right after the location of the town. So it seems that we're getting a loyalty bonus because people have pledged loyalty. I'll get into loyalty a little bit later. Um, but they're overworked because we need new homes. So that's one of the first things I'm going to have to work on is I'm going to put some more homes in here. The population are omnivores glabrin. That's our species. And uh, the lack of homes prevented 20 people from immigrating. There's three troops because every town has troops. So you have some military right off the bat. Population right now is only 24. 24 citizens, 100% are loyal. That's awesome. That means everybody's loyal to us and they're very happy with us. So now we have living conditions. So there's 64 jobs and 24 homes. That's why we have a problem. Because we need to have more homes than jobs just by a little bit. And or it should be that way. But there's also a population limit per planet per resource uh, zone, and I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Um, so we got the uh, we have jobs here, and we have homes, and it's a breakdown of the homes. We got four uh, farms. We got 16 farms and eight houses. Eventually, you're probably never going to see houses again. But then again, you could play differently. Anyways, we have a lots and lots of food. We're pretty much capped on food. I think that's our cap with what we've built. Our power is 82 in reserve. That's pretty good. That means that we like have a capacitor. Um, the power plant has a capacitor, and we're only using we're only going into 82 percent of that before I guess we recharge it. I'll look into power later on, but um, it's not really needed to know any more than that right now. Then we have the bank activity. Well, this is very important for us. Now we definitely know there's money inside the system. You see our our, uh, our government account, what we use for research, which I'll get into later, currently has 318 credits, 318,000 credits in it. The citizen account, they make bullion. Of course, if you're a person that's making bullion, you're going to be paid a pretty hefty wage of making that. They go and buy stuff from the stores, which then gives a, uh, a sales tax, which goes into our uh, government account. And then they also have an income tax how much the whole city has as far as I understand privately in the private sector if you can follow that anyways their balance is two million so I could borrow a lot of money off of them if I wanted to because I think that's where loans pull from so once you borrow that from the bank now you can buy things inside your town you'd think that there's a way of being able to just take things because you're king but as far as I can tell the only thing you could probably do that's close to that is bartering um, but you can't just take things anyways then it has a breakdown of all the facilities now the important thing is that we're all tech level one eventually that's gonna have to change it's gonna have to change for us to even get to another star but we'll get into that later on um, and then it shows all levels now this is a accumulation of all levels this is not just like a build we have eight buildings of clothing factory no we have eight levels of a clothing clothing factory so if I have another building here that has another 8, it would say 16 here. It wouldn't say how many buildings we have, though. So levels is all you really need to know. 
Anyways, so our storage capacity per every commodity in the game, if it's a new type of item, you have immediately 7,000 units of storage that you can store that type of item in the game. So it's not a category, it's each item. Now this will become very large as we play, but this will be the biggest, uh, the best way to break down what's actually in your town. Now these reports only come every 13 minutes. And so if you wanted to know something before that, you're going to have other means, which I'll get into, of showing what's inside the city. It's easier to break down what you have in here and then ask for stuff directly, which we'll get into again later on. So that's the stat city status report, and that means that I'm going to go and work on this overworked pal penalty uh, issue. And then once I'm done that, I'm also going to... Um, to get more iron when I st uh, because we're going to need to do a few things. Uh, for instance, this morale, we need to build buildings for this. Well, we're going to need iron to build most of our buildings because we're, we're not iron, but like uh, it's called metal. It's just called metal. Um, and then we're also going to have to build uh, a series of tools to be able to build all kinds of other buildings and products. And there's a few industrial chains that you'll you'll learn about in this series hopefully or in this episode this is the most important window to know you need to know what this window is giving you it also is of course giving off your location so if you show this to somebody else or anybody else gets this they know where you are I'm gonna go ahead and fix those houses and then I'll cut to the next section after that now that we know that there's money in here let's uh, redeem all of our government debt and let's take out a loan but before I do that, I am going to address something that showed up in the comments. Income tax does actually have an impact on what your citizens do. If you have high income tax, like 50%, they'll decide that they're not going to do a job on a 50% like flip of a coin. And if you have it lower, then they'll it'll be one fourth of the time they may not. Basically. Uh, labor consists of building buildings or doing uh, jobs at any type of building. Even this building, you can go over to a manufacturer and you can have it make metal bullion. So this has a job. I could turn off the shop if I wanted to. So this job is affected by how often they decide to do this job by my income tax uh, policy. There, now at least all our jobs will be done. So, I was totally wrong on that. You should definitely have lower taxes if you can bear with the amount of money that you're making. Anyways, so let's withdraw all our money. Alright, they gave us all, all of it. Some income tax was t collected, see. And now we're going to request a loan. Reputation. As far as I know, it only impacts this, which is taking out a loan. And it's probably about how much work or what you've done inside the empire. But this will go up. So I can take an available, I have an available credit of 2 million. I could take out 2 million, 5 or, and 50,000. There's no interest. I don't know if there's ever an interest. I've never seen an interest. Um, and boom, now I have a lot of money. Now, the funny part is, is that I could just, Request a balance of the government account and take money out of the government because I am king. But might as well just take out a loan. Two million. It's it's just it's some change. It really, really is. Especially when you start getting into magmium. You start to make money that way. <laughs> also, um what is it? Uh anti flux particles um can be very lucrative. Cryozine can be very lucrative. But I'll uh, I'll explain that later on. Okay, so we're not looking at the game right now, but we're looking at a website. We're looking at uh, hazardonwiki.icedown.net slash colonycalculator.html. Now, what this is, is a tool that a person developed that um, helps with that morale issue we were having. Now, with how small the problem is for our uh, settlement, we don't need to use this right now. We could fix that very easily. But I wanted to show you this because it's probably the most useful tool you'll have. Configure it and to make it work for us, 
we are going to put in the planet diameter. Now, if you remember uh, the city status window showing this information, that has right there, it says that we are a 15,200 meter diameter planet. Now, that means that we have a certain population limit. And if we set that inside the planet uh, diameter pull down menu on the website, it'll tell us that we have an, a target of 800 people should, um, is what our cap should be for every city per resource one, zone. So it has a setting called auto morale. Auto morale automatically puts in all the buildings how many levels that you need for every building to satisfy a population per resource zone of 800 people or whatever that target is set to. It's a calculator for the game's mechanics. The other part is, is that it gives you this requirements to build a city settlement with these buildings in it and to their levels. You can set any one of these to whatever you want, but typically it doesn't fill out anything like aircraft factory or aircraft repair or anything like that. It only fills out the, the morale buildings. As far as I know, arenas no longer give, if you're a returning member, a morale increase, but the required. To satisfy this planet, for instance, of how many houses, a condominium gives, I think, three houses. I'm not going to quote, don't quote me on that right now, but if I were to give it one entire building made out of metal, it'll put 16 levels in there and it'll automatically update over here that there's 48 homes. It'll also tell me how much metal I need to make all of these levels. That's a lot of metal. But that's not how many is going to fill out 800 people. So let's figure out what that is. There you have it. 16 will fill our planet just shy of 800. And we can fill out the rest of the homes with things like apartments. We can also fill out just a few different more floors. We don't have to go the whole 17. We just fill out a couple more here that will f flush it out to 800. But anyways, that's the point of this program. I just wanted to show you guys because it's it makes the game easier. Because you're going to be making lots of cities if you play anything like me. Cut to this and show you guys uh, this jackpot that I found. I wouldn't call it a jackpot, but it's actually kind of rare to see that much. In my trials, it's been very rare to see metal uh, clumped together that closely uh, and that dense. So it's going to be nice to, to liberate this from the ground. I'm also liberating some over there. So yeah, we're building some. Uh, the buildings haven't been built, but I'm laying it out. And then I'll go to the Capitol building and build it all. It's usually the way I build. As with any type of metal, if you want it into a malleable form, you're going to have to smelt it. So we're going to have to build a series of smelters all along this road that I've picked. And it's just roads going off to some more mines over there. Those are the mines that I was just clipped at. And then we're back at the farm area. And then after that, I'll build the houses. I'll do all this right here. With all that set now, we're sitting at the Capitol building, and we have the Capitol window open, and we can see that we have all this stuff to build. Lots and lots of mines. Some of it's already started to get built, and some of it's already uh, some of the stuff that I probably already had. Um, the amount of mines that I have and the amount of smelters I have is uh, not balanced in any way, shape, or form. I'm just currently trying to expand. So I don't really balance these type of things, but anyways... Let's see this thing get completely built. I'm going to sit here and work as much as I can. And the citizens will start to probably help me as well. So let's watch it build.
now that we've, uh, well, I haven't built those buildings. Let's see what our city, st city status report is now. Okay, so now they want the morale buildings that I was telling you about before. So I'm gonna go use the calculator and I'm gonna go build all that. Let's build it all right here so that we can use our capital as well to build whatever we need. And uh, let's see how fast we can build it. Ready, set, go. Okay, so, now, I told you that we we're going to get into tools, and basic tools, basic armor, and weapons. That's where we're going to go towards, is armor and weapons, because if you don't remember, there's blood red demon type things on this planet, and God only knows if they're, like, trying to stampede across my entire city and kill everybody in Belgium, and I don't know, some other grotesque thing. So we want to be able to be protected. We also want our military to also have some kind of armor. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is start making those type of production buildings. Now that we have all the morale buildings all laid out, they'll slowly build them and hopefully everybody will be happy. Right now, let's try to find an area where we can start building out our uh, production lines. And also, I do believe I might want to place a couple more condominiums because if I remember correctly, we did not have enough homes over our jobs. And we're going to be adding even more jobs to the already exploding job market. Before we go, I did want to mention that uh, some of the things that we will need to make. Some of those things we're already making. We're making mechanical parts, we're making wrenches, we're making soldering irons. Now, to make, um, to make some of the other things that we're going to want, some of those buildings, we're going to want to make a machine shop to make a couple other tools that are inside here. We already have one, but we're going to want to upgrade that one. We also probably want to move to a different location again and kind of make a couple of them to bolster our supply of things. But we want to make these guys. We want to make a weaponsmith and an armorer. And specifically... I want to see if I can make metal body armor. There we go. Requires a hammer. And probably metal, obviously. It's not exactly telling me, but if I build it somewhere, then we'll be able to figure out which one, uh, what resource it needs. Uh, but the tools is what's really important. Well, that's for building the building itself, not the actual product. So that's a little bit different right there. Um, and then we want it, this one. So the... To build the buildings, we're already set. We got hammers, hammers being made by a carpenter. Anyway, so let's go find that location then and uh, start building up the production lines. Okay, I've come back and I've built everything. Uh, just really across the street, essentially. But I went between where those houses and uh, smelters were. So I've built a couple different buildings here that we'll use hopefully soon but the main ones that we're going to be using are the machine shop right here and probably electronics uh, factory right over here also these two refineries so they're not built yet but we'll go ahead and build them 
uh, we'll, I'm going to let them build it for a while and let them kind of settle down and see what our population is uh, also like put towards our, our jobs to see what the difference is. Okay, so we've made our, um, our machine shop. So now we have tons of mechanical parts because I had set this all to build at once, just mechanical parts. We have all these mechanical parts that could be ran. Uh, we probably don't have enough population to run all this because that does take a while to grow. Um, but we can run it ourselves. Anyways, you can see that mechanical parts need um, a hammer to be made. You have to have hammers already in production. Hence why I'm keeping the um, uh, carpenter right now because it's making hammers. Uh, electricity makes it go faster and computers will make um, more products come out. Shovels will allow us to do our road work a lot faster and I think they're used in some um, mines so they either increase output or speed up production but I'll confirm that later on. Tongues allow us to get nuclear material from um, I think the mines, but I know that you need them to no. It's to put the uh, the nuclear radioactive material into the nuclear power plant. So now we'll be able to make a nuclear power plant and get away from whatever we did make. A wrench is going to be needed to make a nuclear power plant, so we're going to have to put that down there. A torque wrench will be needed later on. After that, um, glue gun is something we're going to need but we're going to be needing uh, natural gas which we'll get once we start drilling oil. A lantern would be nice for us right now and we can use some of the money that we loaned to buy that. Um, it's better than a torch. A fitting wrench we do use. You use that pretty soon and it's only taking metal so I thought it was more advanced but it's not. So we ha also have a mechanical part which is important because we're going to need those. Um, now when you make your settlement, I highly suggest you make another machine shop. I'm probably going to do so because some of the, uh, the mechanical parts, if that gets too low, you start to run into problems where you can't build certain things. And uh, when you first start out, you really have this production problem. If you don't overproduce certain things, you can end up having a production problem. Hopefully we won't here, but I will turn around and... Um, and uh, put another one down. I'll do that right now. Also, uh, I'll come back once we have all of these running and also more citizens because obviously we're not, people aren't making enough babies or something, something's wrong. So I'm going to go check that out and figure out what's going on there because not one of these has ran once. So, but I'll run all these once real quick and then um, come back for uh, getting the armor armor and the weaponsmith uh, place down and starting to make armor and weapons. Oh no, that's not going to do. We're going to need to be able to get uh, better power than just wind. Especially now that we're starting to make some uh, products with that electricity that we're making. I haven't been noticing if the lights have been out, but they probably are out uh, actually right now. So, if we have no power, they don't work at night, which probably means they won't even they won't even run the generator if they could. So, um, let's upgrade the nuclear right now. I'm going to go find some radioactives and start mining that up. And then place a nuclear reactor, more than likely right around here. Now, fortunately, I just uh, went to go look for some radioactives, and I did find one right here. Now, one should be sufficient for now, but we're going to want to mine a couple more. Well, I'll build that mine right here, and then I will build the nuclear power plant right next to it. Would you look at that? As I came over here to just build these manually, um, I see this one right here. There we go. Now we have another one, just in case we get too low because sometimes that can happen with one. But basically that's powering this entire city. I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with power at all uh, for the rest of this let's play in the city. Ooh, damn. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to get into plastic right away. Totally forgot about that requirement and the uh, electrical component. So 
to get uh, plastic, we just need to go get some or, uh, oil and then use that refinery that uh, I don't think I built up. But I'll go build that up and then I'll go find some oil and I'll mine that up and show you guys where I'll mine that. And I should be able to make plastic pretty quickly. Uh, I'll have to build a plastic uh, factory as well. I don't think I placed that down, which is rather stupid because I knew I was going to go to it anyway. Um, and then uh, for the electronical uh, component, we'll need crystals. So there's some crystals right there. And we'll need minerals and I think iron. Uh, but we'll see. Oh, they're not gonna like this one. Oil right next to where uh where they live. So it's gonna get sticky sometimes around here. Hopefully nobody blow hopefully nobody blows the freaking uh pump. So as you can see it's saying oil, it's highlighting it just like we've done multiple times. But I'm also gonna set it now this one only to do natural gas. That'll satisfy some of the requirements for some of the tools that we have and also give us a burnable resource that we could use to make something different than a nuclear power plant. We could use a gasoline uh, power plant. But again, we're already committed to nuclear, so we're going to go to nuclear. Hold down control and go left or right. Also, the pump, uh, the, uh, the pump, uh, I'm going to say I'm saying that right. Well, sorry. It just looks like a pump to me, so. Uh, the well can also get water, which we may need later on, but right now we're alright. Oh, and there's some minerals. Oh, I could have split that a little bit more, but oh well. Oh well. So I'll find more minerals somewhere else. We're going to need a lot of mineral. Well, I don't know about a lot of minerals, but we'll need a lot of crystal, that's for sure. Be back when I get the rest done. Okay, so to start producing plastic, we'll need to make petrochemicals. That's made from a refinery, and I built one level of this uh, refinery just to show you where to set it. Set petrochemicals here, and then we'll need 10 oil. Now, I don't think the well was created yet, so I don't think that's going to work. Nope. Yeah, they haven't made the well yet. I haven't made the well yet. Still working on it, and I'll be back once, uh, well, I'm going to build the next part right now. Plastics factory. And yes, I'm, I'm building everything to max level. Um, more than likely, you're going to need more of the of the buildings that I'm making right now, but I'm pretty much trying to crash course us right into uh, hopefully vehicles, because that's when things get really fun. I'll be back in a sec after I build all this. All right, plastic fi uh, factory is built, and it's already got two levels on it. Um, they are building slowly. Everything's slowly coming together, but I wanted to show that the uh, plastic factory is already set to plastic. It's uh, It can make other things using plastic, so keep in mind there's other ways of making tools. If you have really good plastic and you want really good tools, which usually helps with their durability, which is still used in the background even if you're not using the tool, um, you can use something like, let's say you have really high quality plastic, you could use plastic to make shovels. So I will be back after all of this is done. I'm going to go over to the capital and build all this up and <laughs> make sure nothing is, uh, no crisis is this happening. Uh, if there is, I'll cut to it and show you guys what's going on. Okay, I'm back. And now all the buildings are built up. I uh, actually uh, lapsed a whole real life day. Uh, so everything is built up and all of our products have been made probably to the resource uh, limit for each one. So anyways, let's see a breakdown of what our uh, city status report says. We got a location of course, our morale. We uh, we need a, tr uh, a casino. 
you see um, we still haven't mined a certain resource to be able to make casino you need to be uh, be mining gems for that so we'll get to that sooner than later and but the morale is steady at two, uh, at 20 which is the highest morale that you can get for every city so that's perfect we don't have to worry about them becoming unhappy and slowly but surely every single one of them should become loyal uh, the population steady at 408. We have 408 houses, so that's max population currently. Uh, we have 390 jobs, which is very close to our 408. We might want to increase our houses before we start uh, really expanding jobs. But we've also made money. We have half a million inside our uh, government account, and the citizens have 1.1 million in their account which is awesome and here's the breakdown of all the buildings lots and lots of mines as you can see and smelters should be quite high as well where is that I can't find it there it is 52 which is actually not a one-to-one -one. we might want to actually make that one-to-one -one if you were caring about efficiency maybe but really it doesn't necessarily matter it just means we're gonna have extra ore on top of our uh, our uh, metal bar production so it's right here we have lots and lots of ore very little plant fiber which is something we might want to fix but uh, now that we also have some products uh, we have lots of backpacks and I still haven't gotten into uh, our inventory so well, I'll tell you what we're gonna make a couple other things like the uh, the armor and the uh, weaponsmith and um, then we'll start decking out our character a little bit, have a couple uh, extra uh, tools that can be useful for us when we go to like another city, or we're going to make another city somewhere else. But partic particularly, it'll be very useful for when we actually get off of this planet, because once we do, we're going to be searching for a moon, because a moon has ludium, which is what we need for the next stage or the uh, better versions of... Uh, spacecraft later on but before we do that I plan on getting into armor getting into weapons um, and probably making another settlement on the same planet now uh, one thing I haven't gone into is uh, our map so let's go ahead and go to our world map here so in the world map the one thing I haven't actually, I have to look up on the wiki, forgive me, I haven't looked that, at this up yet, but the world map is, separate, is se uh, separated in three different zones for a planet like this, or any other type of planet that's like, like a legitimate planet that has an atmosphere. Most planets that have an atmos atmosphere have like three zones to them. So you got zone one, zone two, and zone three. Now we're in zone two. That's where we are right now, right over here. Now zone 3 is just over there and it might have different resources, uh, different quality levels. Um, besides getting into space, I'm not sure how you could determine what the quality levels are besides going over and sampling some of the uh, things that you find over there. But I am going to make a, uh, a city out in probably all the way onto the coast because that just seems awesome. Uh, I do play this game not necessarily into an efficiency uh, tactic. I do actually play it just for, for shits and giggles, really. Some of the uh, some of the things that I do in this game. So you'll see something that I like to do uh, for for fun in the game later on when we create that city. That I'm probably going to create somewhere around over here, depending on what it looks like. Or we could go as far as over here. Actually, we'd have all we have access to all three. Uh, resource zones right here that's actually awesome so uh, we'll see uh, what we can do with that in the meantime I'm gonna go plop down those uh, those uh, the weaponsmith and the uh, armor and then I'll uh, come back around then once we have some products to uh, deck our character out with Okay, so, uh, oh, wow, uh, third level just got done of our armor. So, leather body armor is what it was defaulted to when it built it, but we don't have leather, so let's pick something different here. Let's pick metal body armor. 
It just takes a hundred metal. Now, thank God that we have all those smelters, because we probably have enough for that. So let's go ahead and run it. Boom. So now it's going to take two minutes to make metal body armor, and then that'll be that'll be put inside the city's inventory and can be bought by anyone that has access to the city's um, uh, stores. One commercial building I haven't covered yet, which is the broker, is something else that we're going to want to place down. It's probably one of the most useful commercial buildings in the game because not only does it allow you to buy every item in the game from that building alone, it also ships things from one city to another city in the background. Um, this is part of the trading aspect of the game that automatically happens with every city inside a solar system. And it's on a, I think a five minute timer. Um, the other part about a broker is that if you're a returning member, you may remember that you used to have to ship your supplies from one city to another city via ships. With brokers now, you can set a shipment that goes at a fraction or a uh, certain speed of light in the background invisible just like all the other ways that the the solar system trades but you can have it sent to another star you have to have a city there made and ready to accept things it needs to have a broker and an airport but you can actually send resources from one city inside a uh uh, inside one solar system to another city in another solar system without having to use any any type of ship uh, ships at all uh, though this only happens once an hour um, I think that that's the, the absolute limit is like once an hour the thing that can be increased by tech level and building levels is the amount of shipments that can be going out, go out at one time and tech level I think uh, depicts the speed at which it goes in powers of speed of light so uh, essentially they're using warp even if you don't have warp I guess um, but we'll get into that of course later uh, in the meantime we're gonna need a broker so that we can buy these uh, this metal body armor that we're making and scroll down here and find the weaponsmith uh, weaponsmith is still being built of course we got two levels and we're making metal knives now we have the option of making things like rifles shotguns so on and so forth but we don't have any gunpowder we don't have anything to make any of the ammunition for it so I'm gonna stave off on that for now until we start getting into uh, a little bit more uh, some different resources coal is what's needed for gunpowder we don't have coal right now uh, we're just not mining it up and that's fine by me uh, we don't need coal at this very moment. I'm thinking that we might be able to actually make a bike. Or some, or even a, at this point, we probably should be able to make uh, SUVs. SUVs will help with the construction. Come on, camera. Stop it. Right there. Let, see, you can't. I don't understand why the game has it where if you hold down control, you can't do anything in the game. I have unbound control from everything, and it still interferes with my game. I really hope that this could be fixed. Because I really need it to not interfere with my game. Anyways, let me go get those stuff. I'm going to build a broker around here somewhere, and then I'm going to go and buy some items from it. Okay, so we got one level of the broker built, and I've opened up the comm. Yeah, and open up the com, open up trade. And inside trade, we're going to set it to local so it's like a certain radius around us. It's very short. Um, and then we're going to ask them, what do you guys have for sale? And they're going to open a private chat and they're going to tell me everything they have for sale. So they have backpacks, crystals, they have all the things that we make and all the things that we uh, mine up or produce in some fashion. So you can buy everything from a broker. And their prices are in money. So we're actually going to spend, of course, money for all this. We can sort of barter. So you can double click on something and you can say, I want to buy it with this head of a uh, scavenging insectoid. And well, I don't really want to do that. So I'd probably just sell it. But we can still barter throughout the game. As long as you have something that has some form of value. And that value is close to whatever you're trying to buy. So, I want a backpack, but I want one backpack, just for now. 
And they gave me a backpack. Awesome. So you got that metal armor? Yes, they do. There, got some metal armor. Let's buy that lantern, too. Get ourselves a knife. Finally have a knife back. But now what we can do is we could buy a couple tools. Uh, I don't want just a backpack. This. A utility pouch is very useful because what it does is that any items that you put inside of it um, act like they're on you. So when you go into, say, build a building that needs a hammer, you don't have to actually have it. Like, if it's inside a backpack, it won't register that you have it. But if you have it in your utility pouch, it should register that you have it, and you should be able to build a building. Use your F4 menu. So now we actually bought some things. Let's use that backpack and the items that we bought. So we're wearing our, our fabric clothing. We can tell that we're wearing it by this icon right here. And our, our weight is 7 kilograms out of 215 kilograms as of right now. Let's put on our metal armor. Uh, we don't want to use it. We want to right click on it and we want to say wear. Now that's on top of our fabric clothing. You can have clothing on and armor on at the same time. So now we got metal armor on. And we want to carry the utility pouch at our waist. And then we're going to put our sewing needle inside the utility pouch. We're going to put our knife right click on it and say carry at waist is fine for now and our lantern we're going to carry at waist as well we're going to switch that light on we're going to turn off our torch light and we're going to sell our torch light back to the broker to sell things you open up the same channel so they open up a channel with us we can sell directly to them so we say the auction icon that's how I usually sell things you can do uh, for sale that basically says hey I want to sell this item for exactly this price and nothing less nothing more so we'll offer it at 30 and price is too high all right and I offered my lantern I didn't want to offer my lantern I wanted my torch let's go to all items so these are different categories up here click the category and it shows all the items down here and then any item you click, it'll show you the information about it on this side right over here. So we want the torch, and we want to sell that for 9 credits. They'll give us 12 credits. Awesome. I thought I saw 9 at the bottom, but whatever. Gave me more money then. And we'll sell the, the head, because we don't really need this head. <laughs> Unless somebody wants a uh, scalpel. They'll offer us 24. Uh, the normal price for that is like 20 credits, but they gave us 24. Awesome. So now we want to equip our knife. So to make sure that we're formable against a weapon, uh, an enemy, we have our weapon equipped at the bottom. And you can see that I can attack things if I wanted to. So now I can actually defend myself. Now if you haven't noticed, I have no food. So I must buy some food. Well, I'm at the perfect place to buy food. At the broker. Well, anywhere is that they sell things. What is going on? Are they, like, having a meeting here? What is going on? Everybody is inside the broker. Like, everybody's buying stuff. I, I, I'm not really sure why this is happening. I, I just... They're having a marathon. Just imagine them on treadmills inside there, just, like, running. Because I don't know... I don't know how to explain what the hell they're doing inside there. So I want to know what they have for food. And I only want to know food. So what do you guys got for food? They have vegetables. Because that's all we grow. We might want to grow more food because we get a morale bonus for our cities. The, the more quantities or different types of food you have, uh, you get a certain morale bonus to a certain point, I believe. So I bought 20 units of that, and that all went inside my backpack. 
all the way in my backpack and according to the backpack's information we have 20 items totaling 20 CU and this thing can hold 48 CU so we have a whole uh, 28 CU left. There's a better backpack later on we'll get but right now this will suffice for what we need. Okay, now let's see what else we can get into. Um, we're going to definitely need more homes very soon. But before we get into that, let's see if we can build vehicles. Because that's where the game really starts to take off. We're going to, let's build vehicles right next to the power plant. It might be an awkward way to get off onto a major roadway, but why not? We want to make bikes for now. Or, tell you what, we'll build two vehicle uh, facilities. One for bikes and one for SUVs. Because SUVs allow, help you to build general building. And like almost any building, especially roads, SUVs actually make that construction faster. So I, I always want SUVs. So we'll put bikes right here. To build vehicles, you need to build a slab. That's a special type of road. So let's go ahead and cover that now. Since we have oil, we're going to start using asphalt. Asphalt's made with pure oil, just oil. It's 10 pieces of oil per like each road. So with roads, you can change the grading of the road. You can change the, the, uh, the grading is like the, the size, the width of it. So we can put any arbitrary number, even fractions, it seems inside here. I've never done that. I've just stuck with the the normal um not the same size but there's a pull down list of all the different sizes but we don't want a road we want a slab so we're going to select slab and i want a fairly large slab we're going to put the slab right here there we go lock it to a tenth of a degree and tell it to build now, that needs to be built before we can build a factory, so I'm going to run over there and build it, unless they get to it before I do. They just might. It's pretty small. So, I'll be right back. Just as I thought, it took a mere second to build that up. And now, you can see that when I place this down, it's actually showing me where those vehicles will spawn. When they're made, they'll spawn on those small little squares. Now, as long as it's green, it's fine. And they can overlap other ones and still seems to be fine. I haven't had any problems with that in my experiences. Change that to metal. And bam, now we have um, a vehicle facility being constructed. We're going to build another one over there. Alright, so we have everything needed to make one motorcycle at the very least. Let's get out of this drop down view. And they're already creating it. Awesome. Now I already know that there's one problem with what we've just done. We have one other resource that's not going to be available before we could even use this bike. As you can see, it just appeared. So, when you get on a vehicle by pressing the E key, um, it might also be finical on getting onto a, a vehicle. Bear with it, it'll tell you you need to get closer. Try to get closer to a place where um, it shows, like, the seat, essentially. Well, I'm riding in style, I got my knife out and everything. But anyways, once we get into a vehicle, two new bars appear at the bottom over here. The first bar is the fuel. The second bar is the health of the, the vehicle. Now, it's red on fuel, of course, so to reload fuel, either I can get gasoline inside my inventory, or I can press K on my keyboard while at a slab inside a city that might have gasoline. But if I hit K, you'll see that I'm not, I'm hitting K, and it's not giving me anything, because there's no gasoline being made. I never made that production line. That's a very simple process that uses oil. So, I think that that's made inside the refinery, but I will go find out where that's made, and I'll show you guys how to make gasoline. Refinery, there's the gasoline right there. I've set it to make gasoline. 
if we fetch it's using the oil that we have and it'll gasoline be ready in 30 minutes so it'll make 10 each time just like most of the other factories they all make 10 each so you can see I'm also making lots of hydrogen using the atmosphere because that was the default that it was set to whenever I built this building all at once. I'm going to actually set all this, I think, uh, to petrochemicals since it's going to be more useful right now. As you can see, there's a thing saying I'm too far away and I should be sighting, I should be sighting a closer part of it to get onto the bike. You might see that a few times with the vehicles that you use. But uh, it just means that you have to find where the seat is, uh, the front door, the side door, whatever you're trying to enter, try to find out where the seat is. Or think of it logically, and it'll work out perfectly fine for you. But anyways, now I'm on my bike. We have gasoline inside the city. I'm pretty sure it should have already been made by now. So I'll press K. And there, motorbike refueled on road slab. It'll also repair the bike if it gets damaged, and it will be damaged no matter what. It, it will take damage over time. Let's, uh, let's go explore over to that area I said I wanted to build a, a city at. It looks like it's becoming nighttime, so that's concerning, but maybe we might be going towards the sun. That'll be fun. Let's go ahead and get rid of the whole menu and just view what we can see. Open up the map. This is the locator. Let's expand this. So this is where we are. Let's see what's... Okay, so we're going to be going into nighttime. We're going to try to make a settlement over here on this peninsula, right over here. Which I believe is a peninsula. Um, to get over there, we're going to have to ride across the terrain. I will go ahead and start driving over that direction and hopefully have something interesting for you guys to view while I do that. Alright, so let's start our engine. To start our engine, hit P. So it's WASD to turn and it's W to move forward. Another key control is spacebar, that's your emergency brake.
Okay, so I'm going to come back to this location right here as long as I don't get killed. Like right now, because of these things. But I'm going to come back with uh, some flags, or a flag, and settle it right by this peninsula right here. I see where I am on the map, so I'll be back in a bit. On my way back, I've decided that I was going to grab the SUV so I could show you what that's like. Same deal supply, you can go inside, press K to fill up on the fuel, press P to turn on power, and then start driving just like the other one. Now this one's already fully uh, uh, fueled because we already have fuel in the system. So it'll automatically fuel all the new ones that come out. And then um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go head towards that location and plop a settlement down. But I'm going to I'm going to actually build a road all the way there. Okay, so I made it back over here, and I'm inside my SUV, and I've also started to make roads going all the way back, which you'll see in a bit. I'm going to go ahead and place the uh, settlement here, and then I'm going to head back and give you guys a little trip of what I just made, and that'll be the end of this episode. So believe it or not, I died. I had to drive all the way back over here. So I'm placing the settlement now. I'm going to give it a random name that it generates. I'll rename it later. Why not? I don't know if it gave me a birth there right away. I'm confused. Maybe I didn't have one, but I just respawned at my place. Whatever. I'll go back to where I, uh, my main home. And by the way, that's the forest that we were going through. It's actually really pretty from up above. It's all freaking magenta. But anyways, I'm going to go back to the settlement, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.
part with a different ending. That way, the crowd can go ahead and ask questions. I can answer them for my, my best day. And I also have some a couple of guest stars on there if that actually happens. But if you like that idea, please comment below. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support me, visit my pa Patreon page. See you guys in the next episode.